Now that you've got the data, how do you perform the calculations? Well, every single unit that you're coming across has an emission factor. So believe it or not, it's simple math. You just find a unit, you multiply it times the emission factor, that gives you the emissions for each unit. So um, for electricity, for example, and you're trying to calculate what's a CO2 equivalent for your kilowatt hours, there it is. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Now, there's a bunch of different emission factors that you want to be aware of, you know, as you're looking at, you know, fuel consumption or electricity or distance traveled or, you know, the square foot or the amount of waste that you're generating. There's a bunch of different emission factors that are out there. And where we want you to go is to find, you know, one of the tools that comes out of the greenhouse gas protocol from the, uh, say, the WRI or the one of the EPA tools or, you know, whatever your industry uses as its tool you'll understand there's a different emission factor for it. You don't need to know all the emission factors, but I just want to explain to you how the emissions are calculated so you understand the math behind it. So then when you get a number at the end, when people start you know, poking holes at you saying, how did you get here? You have a better way of understanding it. So again, you know, it all comes back to carbon equivalents or CO2 equivalents. So you know when you're calculating the different global warming potentials and you say, okay, well, if I traveled 5,000 miles, what does that, you know, what does that mean in terms of CH4 or you know, N2O or CO2? They all have different you know, metric ton equivalents in terms of what comes out. And so what does it all add up to? I mean, the, the thing that you want to know is what is our total you know, metric ton? So you see here in this example of Intuit where they were looking at you know, from the different fiscal years, where they went from 98,000 to 102,000 in terms of metric tons, this graphic actually helps you, you see where their emissions are coming from. So when you look at this, you're like, wow, most of it is coming from electricity and commuting. And, you know, if we're in our supply chain. So if we're going to, you know, tackle something, let's not be focused on, on, say, workplace vehicles or waste or water. Let's look at those bigger portions of this in your greenhouse gas inventory. Whatever organization you're with, when you calculate your emissions, a graph like this or even better, a pie chart, people will, you know, the CEO or whoever the decision maker will look at it and go, ah, the biggest chunk, we need to focus on that. Or why is this such a big chunk? The little chunks aren't as important. Remember, it comes back to materiality. You want to focus on where are the big chunks? Where is our impact? Within that, those are also the biggest business opportunities. So if you look at this, you know, their opportunities are on electricity and commuting and on their supply chain. Where could they find reductions and operational efficiencies that could save them money and lower greenhouse gas emissions?